gentlemen. Uh, of course, it's a pleasure to give a talk at the prota protagonist on this topic is the LP25, uh, the right device on the shock. However, when I prepared this presentation, I asked what, what do I have to compare the Yampella with? No pump? That was the debate in the last two talks. The balloon pump? That was the talk I initially prepared when I got a phone call three days ago. Um, I got the information that's not the balloon pump I should compare the impeller with. It's a more powerful device, an implantable alvite, etc., to compare the device with. This is quite difficult for an interventional cardiologist where you are limited by the groin and the possibilities of excess you have. But um, I want to show you the results of this uh, quite um, disturbing discussion I had with myself and maybe enter the discussion later on with you. Uh, the subtitle, as you see down there, smart, schmo small, schnell. Schnell is German for all who do not know German, has a first German word, means fast. So, being fast, being small, being smart. And what uh, indications uh, for circulatory support do we have and what do we have to consider? And the first topic was just discussed in the last talk, it's the cost. And the cost is a problem when comparing to so-called low-budget devices with a balloon pump which is only half of the cost actually in Germany of an LP25. But um, when I considered how to discuss this problem, I found out that we get a reimbursement for the 25 in Germany, which is five times higher than the reimbursement for the balloon pump. So it's a winning situation when taking the uh, 25 in German hospitals in comparison for the balloon pump. So this argument is a relative argument, but not uh, anymore. The invasiveness, that is something we should discuss. Technical requirements, uh, the Abiomet device is pretty simple and safe in use. It's portable, you can transfer the patient. We know the contraindications and side effects. The problem of hemolysis, for example, is uh, solved by now. And we know um, about the sufficient LV unloading and have some limited clinical data. You all know this effect during left main uh, PCI, you have a decrease of uh, arterial pressure and, excuse me, if you uh, switch on a, an impeller device with a constant flow, you can implant a stent in the same patient without any change of arterial blood pressure. If you inflate the balloon a little bit longer, you see a decrease in uh, amplitude, but no relevant change. The group of shock patients, this is just another study from the Euro uh, European Heart uh, Survey, uh, gives you of course, these numbers ranging between mortality rates of 40 up to 80 percent in cardiogenic shock patients. This slide should show you one patient who was living quite close to our clinic and he presented with unstable angina pectoris for half an hour. And of course, you see the problem, the, le the occluded left main. The patient was on catechular mines, and uh, I placed him in the um, emergency department without knowing what's going on. A uh, balloon pump in one groin and um, performed the coronary angio, recanalized, and stented the left main. And this patient recovered with a balloon pump. But it was not the balloon pump or, uh, or the PCI itself, it was the combination for a quick and minimal invasive treatment. Within f 45 minutes, the left main was open again and the patient recovered and went home after three days. But uh, what is the problem with the coronaries? 
It takes some time till you suffer shock, in an acute myocardial infarction. Only 8% of the patients, no, sorry, 8% of the patients with an acute MI suffer a shock, uh, but um, most of the patients, 90% of these patients, came to the institution presenting an acute MI but no shock at initial admission. So it takes some time till these patients really show their shock. And it depends on the vessel. There's an interesting analysis of the registry uh, which uh, vessel is involved in the acute MI, ranging from close to two hours up to uh, eight, 11 hours uh, until the shock is really clinically present. So this shows you how important it is to be fast in your treatment, in your revascularization, in your unloading of the left ventricle. But cardiogenic shock is not the no only problem of the coronaries, it's also a problem of the whole human circulation. You sometimes see problems with a slight septic problem, you have an um, imbalance in some organs. You saw these uh, data regarding renal function or liver function, etc. And altogether brings you in an imbalance and crash situation. So you want to get out of this crash situation and uh, have to consider which is the ideal device. Um, uh, recently in uh, the American Journal of Medicine there was an interesting study especially for interventional cardiologists regarding AMI patients. And most of these AMI patients had relevant non-cardiac problems, including renal function, including metabolic uh, uh, derangement, bleeding, pulmonary disease, etc., septic problems. And therefore, I want to just show you one case that was a 61-year-old uh, um, lady who was uh, sent to our institution. We knew uh, her. She had a PCI of uh, the right coronary and the um, LID. Uh, Ten days before, she had a known three-vessel disease, and we implanted her 10 days ago in ICD uh, due to her, her uh, really impaired left ventricular uh, function. And now she came back uh, pre-treated in another institution with a uh, renal uh, failure and hepatic failure, low output, and we were not sure what's going on here, which device to use and what to do. She had already a uh, balloon pump in place, and we switched uh, the balloon pump to an impeller pump in her, and you see these curves showing your lactate level, when we switched from the balloon pump to the impeller, we had a lactate of nearly 10 um, and um, severe acute renal uh, failure. After uh, half a day, we uh, observed a, a markedly decrease in lactate and an increase in urine output. And after uh, n nearly uh, one week, she recovered. She really recovered uh, from her septic combined cardiogenic shock. We were able to wean her from the pump. We reduced uh, the pump speed and the pump was removed after one week and the patient uh, was really in a good condition. We observed an improvement of uh, ejection fraction and uh, not only the renal, but also the liver came back. And after two weeks, we were able to discharge her home. Another uh, case shows you, uh, similar to this uh, previous case, uh, uh, in the first session, a young uh, male patient with an, uh, myocarditis. This was his uh, X-ray of the chest at admission, and we found an eosinophila, um, but also changes in ECG and a positive troponin. An acute MRI scan showed you a diffused uh, reduction in left ventricular function, but also a, a diffused a late enhancement of the myocardium uh, after um, gallium uh, contrast dye. 
and uh, the coronaries, of course, as you can imagine, were okay. Um, we uh, took a while until we took him to the cath lab because we thought of 25 years, this cannot be, but he showed increasing troponin and uh, he showed at uh, the third day a real shock situation with increasing lactate levels and the colleague who performed the coronary angio immediately implanted him a balloon pump too. However, he worsened and the next day I saw this patient and exchanged the balloon pump to an impeller and uh, we were able to reverse the increasing lactate levels. And this patient also needed nearly one week of support until we were able to wean him from the pump. Um, most patients show after one to two days a significant improvement. So uh, when you have the first 48 hours of cardiogenic shock, you consider this patient will recover or this patient won't recover and we were able to wean him successfully after we uh, gave him uh, a treatment with cyclosporine and cortisone for his uh, Wigner. Okay, this is the discharge picture. Uh, the third patient I want to skip, it's just a routine uh, shock patient with a last vessel PCI. So what are the, the advantages of the 2.5 in such shock situations? You can insert the device very fast, percutaneously. If you have a trained team and your cath lab, it takes you 5 to 10 minutes from preparation until the patient is on the pump. It's really easy to remove the pump either by perculose or by C-clam. And you can use the device without any special trained cardiac technician, which is uh, necessary, for example, if you use a standard ECMO. It provides, as just shown by some examples and uh, previous presentations, it provides a sufficient support in low output patients. And it's an ideal support device, especially uh, in uh, patients with a markedly impaired